Thank you for joining us. Before we get started on today's episode, just a quick reminder to please smash the like button in the bottom right corner and subscribe to Locked On Senators so you can be the first to know when new content arrives. The best way to help us grow is to comment on the video as well. So let us know if this is a player you want the Sens to draft or you think they should stay away from and let us know why as well. This is one of 64 draft profiles that we're producing. So let's get into it. Coming in at number 44 with an average rank of 43. We're going over to Russia for Vladimir Grudenin, an undersized but extremely mobile defenseman. Yes, similar to a favorite of yours, Ross, Lane Hudson. Similar mm-hmm. size, although he, Vladimir Grudenin is 5'10", 150 pounds. So he's got two inches on uh, on your pal Lane For there. Now. Growth plates, baby. For now, that's fair. Yep, definitely. Um, and he, like most guys in Russia do, similar to Sweden, they bounce around a couple leagues. So he was playing in the MHL. He got in 18 games. He had two goals, 11 assists. Then in the VHL, 12 games, three points. And then the KHL, six games, only one assist there. So he had a little bit of a taste of each of the leagues over in Russia. And He's a small defenseman. That is very clear. So we're going to have the typical small defenseman chat. I know it gets old, but it's a very similar situation for a lot of these guys. There's a lot of them in this draft. It seems that way, eh, Ross? And look, he uses his size to his advantage. He's small and he's shifty. He's able to avoid contact in certain situations. And he uses that evasiveness to his advantage rather than a disadvantage. Yeah, certainly. But... What I noticed about him is he activates in the offensive zone all the time. We'll pull up his card right now and get into it further. He's playing with Moskva right now with the Red Army there. And he's obviously spending a lot of the time in the MHL because the KHL, like the one game he actually got ice time, he got an assist. But there's games where he dresses in the KHL and gets zero minutes and zero seconds. Wow. Like, What's the (laughs) point? Yeah, this is, I I don't understand a lot of the development processes overseas. It seems very confusing to me. I'm excited to ask Tony Ferrari. I've already jotted in my notes. We've got to ask him about that because the rankings, he's nowhere to be found on Craig Buttons. He's nowhere to be found on Corey Promins. He's nowhere to be found on Chris Peters. He's an honorable mention for Bob McKenzie, who did a top 81. And he's an honorable mention for Scott Wheeler, who did a top 64. But for for Tony Ferrari, he's 19th on his board. 19th on his board. And Elite Prospects has him at 29th. So you're like, wait, 19 plus 29? How's it an average of 43? Well, we did do a video explaining our ranking. So you can go find that on our YouTube as well. So he comes in with an average of 43. And to me, he's a guy who's going to have to bulk up even further. So you said he's 150, right? Was that Elite Prospects that had that? Yeah. So I use the NHL Central Scouting so everyone is in the same boat or at least in the same entity for that. So he's 158 there. And you can see from the photo, like he looks like, he doesn't look like a small guy, maybe a little bit diminutive in height, but he doesn't look like he's thin or, or a, a piece of paper out there. So I think that it's, it's going to be exciting to see how long it takes him to develop because he could be one of these guys who stays in Russia for three, four, hell, even five years. But then... They're the kind of guys that when they come over, they win the Calder trophy. (laughs) Like that's how that works. Um, Spell Calder with a K, hey? (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Yeah, this is an interesting thing about Grudin. And I noticed the same things, Ross. I was like, how are some of the top scouts and analysts not like they're not even interested in him. And then other guys like Tony have him so highly touted. And I think that um, it's, When you're a little player like this, there's guys that don't mind that. And then there's guys where it's it's a big deal, right? And that's going to get factored in. And if you guys haven't checked it out, Will Scout, she does great uh, profiles about these players. He did a 14-minute video on uh, Grudinen, and I thought it was great. He explains that while Grudinen's never going to out-muscle guys when defending, he uses his mobility, his good skating efforts to hound Guys, like he will chase you in the offensive zone all shift long. Like you think, okay, I'll get him away from from here. No, I'll pivot here. He's right with you. Like he will he will follow you until he can get that loose puck from you if he needs to. And I think that's a really good um, 
uh, attribute for him. And even when he is out muscled, because he, he's going to get out muscled, he's he's small. It happens. He's going to find ways that he can be a problem for you. He'll use his stick to poke poke it away. He'll try to lift your stick. He'll try to tie you up. All those kinds of things. So for the small guy narrative, the liability on defense doesn't really match up with Gurdinan, in my opinion. Two goals, 11 assists for 13 points in 18 games in MHL action this season. Zero penalty minutes to go along with it. So for a a smaller guy, you're right, in the defensive zone, he's not relying on hooking, tripping, or core holding guys to keep them off the puck. Now, when I was watching the Elite Prospects, they were doing their scouting meeting, and J.D. Burke there said he sees a lot of Sam Girard in in his game. Do you think that's a decent comparable? Yeah, I mean, makes sense. Very similar. The only thing is is and uh, Will Scouch talks about this is he doesn't get power play time in Russia and you you mentioned it they're a KHL game where he's dressed and plays zero shifts zero minutes like wouldn't you see this guy and be like all right if like if you're not going to play him then at least get him on the ice for the man advantage like just have him as a power play specialist as a default like that's at least where you can have him and they just weren't doing that which for Grudinin, I feel bad for him because he's not getting an opportunity to shine and he's able to play so well in the offensive zone, but he doesn't get that prime opportunity. So I think there's a lot of untapped potential here that playing in Russia and playing in those higher leagues really stifles him. What is your Senator's opinion of him? Do you think he's a guy that would help their prospect pool? This may sound funny because I've mostly said positive things about him, Ross, but I've got him at two and a half stars here just because I have a similar note to you where you said, oh, this is a guy who might be in Russia two, three, maybe even four years. I have that feeling here. And for the Sens, I don't think that's really what they want here. And look, if you're going to bet on a small player with high offensive upside, let's bet, bet on Lane Hudson. Yeah, fair enough. And a guy who you know the Senators are much more comfortable drafting out of that program. I'm trying to look back because obviously they drafted Igor in 2020, but they drafted him out of the Quebec League, not out of Russia. You have to go so far back. So far back. Till when the last time they drafted out of Russia was. I'm I'm already down in 2010. I don't have any. Uh, I'm looking still. Do, 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 do. I can't even think of a player. Oh, I got one. 2005 is the last time they drafted out of Russia. Vitaly Anakalenko out of Yaroslav. And we actually have a Yaroslav product coming up in this trio of draft prospects. We also have an undersized defenseman. So a little bit of everything. Hey, that draft, they drafted two players out of Russia. The other one being Ilya Zubov, who got 11 games with Ottawa, played a full season in Binghamton. So did come over two full seasons in Binghamton, did come over, but... I'm with you. I got him at three stars. Again, like if the team wants him, I could talk myself into his strengths of his game, but he's not a guy who I'm banging the table and saying, hey, go out and get this guy. But certainly a guy who I think will help a prospect pool. I could see a a team like Tampa going after him in like the second round if he's still available and just being like, all right, we've got a bunch of Russians. I think when he comes over, he'll be able to be integrated right away and we'll get him in the mix. Power play specialist, a guy who's going to play in all likelihood on your bottom pair.